Journals. The lovely Meg from Meg Journals asked me to um, be part of Junk Journal July this year, which is obviously something that I was very happy to come and join in with because it's always a delight. Um, and yeah, so I have this video to share. So if you're here for the first time because of that, welcome. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. My prompt was cozy and I had a bit of a think about it. And to me, the thing that says cozy more than anything else is a quilt. And so that's the idea that I started with. And I went to my scraps of um, quilting fabric. These are all Liberty of London Tanner lawn fabric. So they're quite lightweight. Um, and they have lovely patterns on them. And these are just bits that are from my, uh, I've got different size scrap baskets for fabric, kind of like I do for paper as well. I've got like um, teeny tiny ones and then some that are sort of in between. And so I went through them all um, and found a couple of different uh, prints that I thought would look nice together and picked them out. And then I went to my journal. Um, this is actually the first uh, page that I did in this journal because I needed to have the video ready for um, for Meg. And so that, this is actually um, a little bit out of order probably if you've seen other uh, Junk Journal July videos on my channel. But um, yeah, so this is the first one that I did. Um, and yeah, I'm just measuring out some fabric because I want to make something a little bit quilty. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm not going for uh, neat seams and things that match up and line up, but I do want it to fit comfortably inside the journal. So I just wanted to eyeball that a little bit. Um, and I'm snipping this piece and just tearing it because it creates a really nice edge. I'm just gonna zoom in and show you here. Um, it's all kind of frayed and a little bit stretched and that creates some really nice texture. I want this to look a little bit kind of soft and raggedy and well loved I guess is the vibe I'm going for so tearing instead of cutting often works really well there and so that's going to be one side of this little piece of um, stitched fabric that I'm creating and then I'm layering these other pieces on the other side this small piece um, is too little to tear so I actually just use my fingers to fray the edges a little bit I'm doing that on some of my um, cut edges rather than torn ones um, so I just, like I said, I just want this to look as sort of rough and soft and um, I guess kind of old and loved <laughs> as possible. We're not going for neat, we're going for friendly. <laughs> um, yeah, so there I am fraying the edges of this one a little bit too, this tiny piece. I love this print. It's one of Sarah Jane's favourites as well, so I really wanted to include it here because this little page is going to feature... Um, my little family and so I needed to put that little goose on there with a little umbrella um, so I'm laying out these small pieces on the other side of that larger piece with the um, purple roses on it and I'm doing them um, right sides out so these are getting pinned to the back of that other piece I don't use pins a lot when I sew I usually just use my fingers to hold things together I'm, I'm pretty good at just kind of um, going by eye and by feel but for this one, I didn't want things to fall off as I was moving it around as I sewed. So I am putting a few in um, just to make sure everything stays in place. You can get things like um, iron on adhesive and spray on adhesive when you're doing stuff like this as well. But I find that they gum up my machine a little bit. So I don't like to use them if I can help it. Um, yeah, they uh, tend to make things a little bit sticky and frustrating and like not as easy in the long run as you think they will or that they kind of should, you know? <laughs> so yeah, a couple of pins ends up working um, pretty well for me here. So I'm just making sure each piece is held down with at least one pin so it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, and now I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine. So I'm just gonna stitch around the little focal pieces, which is funny because when I was laying this out, I wasn't actually thinking about how I was going to stick it into the journal. I mean, I was, but I wasn't taking the placement into consideration. I'm not very good at holding more than one thought in my head at once. So I was thinking about the aesthetic thing, how it looked and how it was laid out, but I wasn't thinking about the practical side of it. And it means that this little stag here with the flowers and the pretty, um, you know, grasses and stuff actually ends up being 
on the back, which gets stuck into the journal. So you don't end up seeing him, but we do see the little goose. So that's the main thing. Um, and I might see if I've got another piece with that stag on it and include it somewhere else in the journal, but that's okay. That's how these things go sometimes. So you can see that I am just stitching around, um, each of the kind of focal pieces, like I said, and, um, when I change direction and turn the fabric around, I do it with the needle, um, in the downward position. And then I lift up the foot so that, um, it doesn't move around while I'm, um, well, I'm repositioning it. So like it stays in, in the same spot, the needle kind of holds it in place, which is a clever little trick that has saved me a lot of time and keeps things, I guess, neat isn't the word, just keeps things running smoothly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, like I said, I'm not going for neat here. I am hoping to create some little areas where the fabric kind of bubbles up a little bit and stuff because I want it to have that soft quilty vibe, but obviously it's going in a journal, so I can't add like wadding and like batting in there because it'll be too thick. So if the fabric's just a little bit like uneven, you get that sort of pillowiness without having to add too much bulk. I mean, obviously it's layers of fabric, it is gonna add bulk um, and I'm okay with that, but there's a, there's a limit to how much of that you can get away with, especially when it's the very first page that you do in a journal and you start off with something um, chunky. Um, yeah it sort of makes things tricky <laughs> if you go in too hard from the beginning but yeah this is what it looks like all um sewed up I've kept some well, most of the sort of loose threads and um all of that stuff on there because I love that for added texture and now I'm showing you how I'm actually going to put it into the journal so the idea was that I was thinking about a quilt that um wraps people up and keeps them cozy and safe and warm and that feeling of of coziness and um, being protected and um, enveloped, I guess. Um, quilts are perfect for that, right? And especially because I love to make them, they're a handmade thing. So they've also got that sort of, they're imbued, I guess, with the, the love and the care of the person that's made them. Um, so that's the kind of vibe that I wanted to create. And so this is an element in the journal that enfolds what's inside it. And I was just thinking about how I wanted to um, uh, add a closure. I decided I didn't want to put a button on it because I thought that that would be, again, a little bit too much bulk. The ones that I had were just a little bit too big, um, but a button could have worked. But in the end, I decided to get this little scrap of, um, it looks like ribbon. It's not ribbon, but you know, it's trim, I think. It's because it's sort of woven. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's a ruler thing <laughs> ruler trim um and I thought it would be a nice little tie I've had it forever I have no idea where I got it from probably from a quilting shop of some kind about a million years ago and I think this is the last piece of it that I have um and it was just in a little basket and I thought yep that will go nicely um and so yeah I stitched that to the outside so that it can be um a closure the next thing I did was grab a photo of Sarah Jane, my wife, and Artie, our kiddo, and printed that out as a little Polaroid and then mounted it on the on just like a little um, shipping tag that I made out of uh, craft colored cardstock. And I wanted those to be about the width that I wanted the folds to be, so I sort of uh, stuck them together in a slightly offset sort of way so that that can set the size for how it will roll up um, if that makes sense and now I'm adding some stamped words it's just a little um, I don't think it counts as journaling but um, yeah it just it says I just want to wrap you up and hold you close and keep you safe and warm again with the feeling of coziness and the theme of a quilt um, and this is the, um, this is going to tuck in behind the photo and the tag and you'll see it, um, get all wrapped up. You can see I actually stitched it on. I put a little bit of tape behind it where you can't see, um, to hold it in place. And then I took it back to the sewing machine and added some stitching and that will fold with the photo and the fabric, um, and just get all tucked into this nice little 
soft, enclosed, cozy space in my journal. I can tie it up and I'm able to just create a, a single knot that's not too, uh, doesn't have too much sort of uh, chunkiness to it, which is good. I'm just going to trim the end there because that was a little bit too long. And that is pretty much it. But when it was on the page, it just looked a little bit lonely. Like it was sort of floating there a little bit um, untethered. So I took a couple of scraps of um, really lovely rose colored tissue paper and I've tucked them in behind to make it look like it's actually stuck to a whole um, sheet of the stuff. But I'd already actually sewn it into the journal. Um, so I couldn't, you know, take it out and stick it back in again. Um, so instead I just tucked it in around the edges to make it look like it was mounted on that and that finished it off and yeah that's the little page I really hope you like it I'd love to encourage you to use some fabric in your journals if that's your kind of thing if you like a chunky journal um, it's a great way to add softness and um, just a lovely kind of tactile element to um, your journal so yeah uh, enjoy junk journal July the rest of it and I'll see you again soon bye